Hello, this is Matt Sherwood again, and I am a technology teacher of middle school students, and today I'm going to be talking about how to use the clone stamp in Paint.net. So to uh, first be clear, the clone stamp is a tool that will take a section of the picture and duplicate it um, wherever you want it to be duplicated. So what I've done is I've kind of mocked up this project here and I'm my goal is to make it look like this plane is flying through this giant arch try to make it look as realistic as possible. So what I've done is I've you can see the layers on the left I've actually taken this arch picture and made three layers. I'm going to delete the background since I don't need it. And uh one of them you'll see has the original picture and uh, it's totally complete. The second one I've actually taken and I've erased um, some of the rock on the horizon and that's to uh, so I can better use the clone stamp to make it look like the plane is in the sky. I've deleted a few sections on the rock in the foreground just to show you how the clone stamp can work on that as well. And then on the third duplication I just took um, a basically took the eraser and even missed a spot with a fairly uh, sloppy erase just erased everything that I could see except for the sky okay and then there's their airplane which is on a separate layer and then of course uh, giant baby I'm not sure if I'm gonna use the giant baby but there he is I've already removed the backgrounds from these different parts of the picture if you're not sure how to do that you're gonna go want to watch my video on removing backgrounds from a photos using paint.net. So at the moment we want to do some simple cloning. I'm going to turn on this uh, s second version of the arch and kind of show you how this works. Um, I'm going to click on the clone stamp and the brush width is important. So I'm going to probably set the brush width, I don't know, let's try 25. You can see how it compares to the objects on the page. Depending on the quality of the picture, the brush you know, 25 pixels might be extremely small if you have a, a very high quality picture. It might be large if it's a low quality picture. So you kind of need to test that. Now, so I have the clone stamp on. What I want to do is sample this section of the rock and I'm going to take it from the edges over here onto this blank spot. So what I do is I press the control button on the keyboard. It's usually in the bottom left corner and you'll see that you get an anchor. That's my anchor point. So I'm going to click let go of the control button. Now you see it's holding on that section and I'm going to start drawing it across. And um, the reason I do it sideways is because it'll it'll include some of the the lines and stuff. It, it'll look a little more realistic. Um, it's not perfect but well this isn't Photoshop but it's it does a pretty good job for for what you pay for it which is nothing. Um, we could do a little blending on that with uh, by kind of sampling it again. I could sample it closer by. Let's see what I get there and just kind of maybe mix it up a little bit. And uh, s sometimes it gets better as you go. Sometimes it gets worse as you go and you got to start over. It just there's no rule on what works all the time. Um, so that you wouldn't likely notice this section is filled in unless you knew what to look for. Um, a simple little trick is you can take a selection here, like here's a selection um, using the rectangle select. I could also use the lasso select and it would be a little more irregular here. Let me try that actually. That's probably a smarter move on this. And then run a simple effect on here. So if I go up to the effects and let's try a blur and I'm gonna try a simple uh, Gaussian blur it'll uh, b give it us well kinda of, well duh, it'll blur it and uh, kinda of take away some of the obvious lines from the, uh, f the from the tool you just used okay if I do it again 
uh, wrong tool, clone stamp, come down to the bottom, and I just got to decide. I think I'm going to grab it from the left side over here because we have some lines that I can kind of follow. Sample there, and well, what's going on? Let's see. Oh, this selection over here is still selected. I need to deselect it first or else it'll continue to stay selected. I won't be able to work anywhere outside of the selection. That actually happens quite a lot. Got to pay attention to that. Okay, control button pressed. Sample that area. Now I'm going to draw into that area. This one's coming along pretty nice. This doesn't have to be used on textures. It could be used on anything. I have students sometimes decide they want to create a third eyeball on their head and uh, you just use the same technique to sample one of your eyes in the middle of your forehead. That one turned out fairly nicely. I don't think I need to run any blurs on that at all. Now for the sky and for using the stamp on that, I'm probably going to choose to use this layer where I eliminated all the rocks from it. So I'm going to start on the rocks. Turn that on, turn this layer off, and now I'm just left with the sky. So for this, I'm going to sample right there. I might even turn the size up a bit, 45, there we go. Sample right there, and then I'm just going to start coloring down. Sample again, and you, you have to keep sampling sometimes because you... Uh, need to expand your area that you're working in. And I'm going to finish up, fill in this area on the right side with the blue sky. Okay, so I took and I filled in the sky up above. And at the moment I have students on lunch in here, so if it's kind of loud, I apologize. I uh, filled that in. Now if I take uh, the original, you can see what it used to look like. And I actually need to take this sky that I colored and move it down in the layers. That doesn't really look all that fantastic, so we're going to apply that same effect that we did earlier with the blur. So I'm going to take that section of sky and take the lasso tool and lasso myself oops lasso myself a section of sky I'm not that good at lassoing I guess and run the Gaussian blur and let's see that's mm, alright Okay, and to wrap it up, I'm going to turn on the airplane and make some slight adjustments in it to look like it's flying through that arch. So, first of all, I'm going to zoom in quite a bit. You can do that with the control button and the mouse wheel as well. I'm gonna this time. I'm gonna take just the eraser and make sure that I'm on the plane layer the tail is on the other side of the rock here so we're gonna and that's probably all I needed to do now it looks like it's in the process of flying through uh, giant baby <laughs> don't think I need it so if I wanted to I could use the picture there make a selection around the giant baby Move it here behind the mountain. So if I'm going to blend the baby into the mountainside, I actually can't use the clone stamp on this one because these rocks are on a different layer. So rather than the clone stamp, this time I'll use the eraser. Then I'll carefully erase the straightness of that line. and he looks like he's behind the mountain. So there you have it. Now as far as saving this project, you're simply going to do File, Save As, choose your location. 
I would definitely recommend a JPEG or a PNG. Um, only benefit of PNG is that if you had a transparent area, it would still stay transparent. JPEG, for most applications, works just fine. Um, you'll get this dialog box to choose the quality settings. Uh, for this, just look at it. 100 is 1.1 megabyte. 30% is 100. It pretty much looks the same, so I'm going to go with that. Then we need to flatten the layers. The layers on the right side will squish down. And this is now a JPEG file, exact same kind of file as comes out of your camera. And that's it. Thank you.